I'm Kelly Perkins. I'm a heart transplant recipient and mountain climber. I'm Craig Perkins, and I am the husband of a heart transplant recipient mm -hmm. and also a mountain climber. I grew up in Lake Tahoe, and the environment was very outdoorsy and very healthy. That led me further to just enjoy the mountains, and that's really where I've learned to thrive, and that's really become what makes me tick. One of our first dates was actually a backpack trip up in the mountains, so that's how we got to know each other. It was love at first sight, and I mean, who has a better story than that? <laughs> she is, is in a chronically good mood. <laughs> She's always smiling, and I could say that even when times were extremely difficult, when she was as ill as she, she was, there was still a sense of joy about her that never, that never seemed to, to diminish. So in 1992, we headed on over to Europe, and we were doing a backpack trip in it to celebrate our five-year anniversary. What we really were looking forward to is just finding out who we were going to meet along the way, and, and what mountains and trails that we were going to go ahead and climb. And we started off in, in Switzerland, and we hiked in the shadow of the Matterhorn and all the trails below. And we thought, wow, what a spectacular mountain that is. But we never, ever had any uh, sense of, of desire, really, to uh, climb it, only because we thought that's really left for the experts. And the photographs that we took there it was, those were some of the final memories that we had of Kelly's old heart because right after that trip, she, she got sick and our life changed forever. We weren't back but a month and I began to notice my heart. Well, I mean, how many people notice their hearts? You don't notice your heart. It automatically should work perfectly, right? Especially in a 30-year-old active female with no family history of any kind of heart disease who lives a very happy and healthy lifestyle. The last thing I ever anticipated was any kind of heart condition, any kind of medical condition. And so when I went to the doctor, my resting heart rate was 200 beats per minute. So it was four times my normal rate. And I was sitting on an examination table doing absolutely nothing and unaware that my heart was beating that fast. So obviously we knew that there was a serious problem here. And that's when, that's when life really started to change. My heart had been attacked by a virus, which made it go really, really fast. And really, really fast can be very life-threatening. And in my case, it was. I was so healthy. There was no reason for me to be sick. And Craig says to me, he goes, you know what? This didn't happen to you, it happened to us. And he didn't just say it, he lived it. The reality is, is that she was going downhill, and she, there, there was no question about it, to the point where I eventually pulled the doctor aside and I asked him, I said, I, I, need, to, I need to know what really is the long-term prognosis for Kelly. And uh, he told me that uh, it was highly likely she was going to need a heart transplant. Kelly had about a week to live. That was, that was her, her life expectancy based upon where she was. So it really was a miracle, the fact that she received the heart when she did because she would not have lasted. The only thing I heard was, it's a go, and I was out. It wasn't until I kind of started to feel a little settled down that I was like, wow, what just happened here? You know, wow is such a miracle. I mean, it's, I was on my deathbed and now I've got warm toes and warm fingers and is there a bigger miracle? It's amazing. About 10 months after Kelly uh, had the transplant, she really wanted to kind of exercise her heart. And so she said, let's go to Yosemite and let's hike some of the trails there. And so we did. Kelly ended up getting dehydrated and ended up in the hospital. After that, she recovered and I said, well, Kel, what would you like to do next? And she said, you know what, we gotta do something bigger. So she said, let's go ahead and let's climb Mount Whitney, which is the tallest mountain in the continental United States. So after uh, training for a long period of time, we successfully went out and Kelly, Kelly summoned it. It turned out to be a story that was, the, that was picked up by the Associated Press. And that story was picked up and read, as we later found out, by the family of the donor. 
shortly after that article came out that there was a message uh, on our home phone and it said, uh, I think you have my mother's heart. So with that, the relationship started. We recognized that, you know, here is something that um, happened to us and we can turn this around and really possibly help change the perception that's out there about organ donation. She became kind of the trailblazer in saying, well, let's then do it so other people can feel like they can too. Going on to climb Mount Whitney was an important mountain to climb just because she wanted to compare her old heart with her new heart. As we got into that and ended up successfully climbing that mountain, we realized this is really fun. Going beyond that and going to uh, Mount Fuji, I was contacted by the daughter of the donor before and I uh, explained to her, I said, we're going to be going over to Japan and if you'd like to send out a little wish wand, we'll blow some bubbles from the top and we'll make a wish on behalf of your mom. And she said, oh, that would be just, just great. But if you wouldn't mind, I have a special request. Um, can I send out my mother's ashes and could you release them from the top? And of course, I immediately said yes. I decided to keep it a secret. Sure enough, Kelly made it to the summit. And when we got up there, I explained that uh, I was holding her ashes and uh, the request was to release them from the top. Mm. Yeah. It was the most emotional moment in my life, of course. And I just felt so special that I was actually giving back to them in some way. You know, before, with my donor heart, I. I really looked at it as my donor heart, not part of me. At that moment that we released those ashes, I felt like, wow, I felt like permission to make my heart my own. So after Mount Fuji being a great success, we thought, let's go ahead and climb the tallest mountain in the continent of Africa, uh, which is gonna be Mount Kilimanjaro. I was six and a half years post-transplant, climbing one of the world's seven summits. Another symbolic climb for us was to go back and to go to Switzerland and climb the Matterhorn. One of the climbs that was extremely intimidating for us was El Capitan. That's a 3,000 foot sheer face wall. It's the largest in North America. I mean, you really have to climb for a long time to go ahead and do something like that. But then it was pointed out to us, there's this natural cutout of a heart. There's this huge heart in the middle of El Capitan. And at that point we said, well, we just have to do we it. We have to. I know that today, could be my strongest day. And so for me, every single mountain I climb, it just reinforces me that I'm strong and I'm healthy. And that, that is the greatest thing in the world, to have your health. You go to the doctor and he can tell you you're okay. There's nothing like climbing a mountain and knowing that you're okay. It's so easy to go ahead and become a donor. I mean, you just have to go ahead and register with your state registry. And if you go to Donate Life, Net, you can choose the state that you're in and sign up. I am so happy I was a donor before I was ever in the position that I needed to receive an organ. If you put it in perspective that it could be you, it could be a loved one of yours, then I think the decision is pretty straightforward.